Hi everyone, I'm Farrah Moan. I'm on a little TV show called RuPaul's Drag Race Season 9. Today we're gonna do a quintessential Farrah Moan makeup tutorial. This makeup is basically what I do if I'm in a hurry or I have a time restraint, so you guys get to watch me go from this to this. <laughs> So first I like to go in with this aftershave just cause your face gets so raw when you're shaving it to hell and back. It's got a lot of glycerin in it which really helps the makeup just fuse to your skin a little bit. It kinda smells like a daddy. Mm. <laughs> My favorite smell. Okay, now we're gonna go in with one more primer just to fill in the pores now. I like to really just slather this in these pores especially because these are like where I have my problem areas. So, the next step I'm, I usually do is I color correct. This usually looks really crazy when my friends watch me do my makeup. They'll be like, what on earth? What in tarnation are you doing? What in foundation? <laughs> I'm actually kind of extra, you know, 50 shades of extra, so I'm gonna do my dark circles too. I also kind of do the little shaved sideburns. I know this looks really dark, you guys, um, but I promise it literally covers up with foundation. I use a darker shade of uh, kind of like a clay color because the skin on my face is kind of a fair complexion and my five o'clock shadow comes in really blue so the red just kind of counteracts. I just slather a lot of it on. I mean, as you can see, I have a pretty dark five o'clock shadow. I mean, it's no joke. So now I'm going into foundation. I usually apply this with a brush, um, but today I'm gonna just, it's actually really fast if you just kind of like slather it on with your hand and then just blend it in in a minute. I use a medium coverage on everything but this area, my lower five o'clock shadow area. Then I'll go in with a full coverage foundation. But you know, if you don't have anything to cover, it's silly to use a full coverage because Full coverages can add a lot of texture to your makeup application and kind of give you that real cakey look. Now we're gonna go in with the full coverage. I mean, it's no joke. I just kind of dot it on there and then I'll brush it around with a concealer brush in a minute. This one's so intense and high coverage that if I tried to blend this in with my hands, I'd have makeup on my hands all day. Now we're blending it all in with a beauty blender. Before I go on with concealer, I'm actually gonna apply um, a thin layer of powder right now. I can't remember, I was watching some YouTube or some makeup artist that uh, mentioned this technique and I was like, what? Putting powder and then concealer, that doesn't make any sense, that's scary, but I tried it one day. I had a day to be, ex like, you know, explore my makeup a little bit and honestly, I have not gone back. So it, where I'm gonna put the concealer is gonna be under my eyes. I'm actually not gonna go in heavily with this powder, it's just gonna be a slight, Light, slight amount. So I'm actually just gonna go in with my concealer with my finger. I usually use a concealer brush, but actually the other day I did it with my hand just because I couldn't find my concealer brush and I was in a hurry. And I noticed that this actually was a lot faster because look, watch this. Usually I'm all about using the makeup brushes, but boop, 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 boop. Boop, 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 boop. Do y'all see that? Oh my God, look, no dark circles. It's like magic. I'm actually gonna put a little bit more on my five o'clock shadow area. It seems like the makeup trend right now is to draw your eyebrows on when your foundation's still wet and then clean it up with concealer. I like to do my eyebrows at the end because I like them to look really fresh. So now we're just gonna blend this out with my sponge. I was actually getting ready with one of my friends the other day and she was like, oh my God, what are you doing? Like she was like, that's so weird. And it is kind of weird, I mean, I do my makeup way different than everyone else, but I mean, literally every time someone meets me, they tell me I look just as good, if not better, than I do online. So I guess what I'm doing is working fine. <laughs> Hopefully. And we're actually gonna pack some more powder on there. This little brush right here actually has like a, it's like an egg dome shape. It's really good for getting right in there. You do not want to over powder on this step. If you over powder on this step, it's literally gonna crack your makeup. The more powder you use, the more texture you're gonna have. And if you wanna go for that flawless little pheromone moment, then you really don't wanna over powder. Oh, it's contour time. So I don't know why I do this, but I always feel like I gotta hold my, I always have to do this. Like, I don't know why, it just, it's kinda like the mascara face. I really just like to be snatched for the gods. And you know what? If your face isn't perfectly symmetrical, it's fine. No one's face really is. I have like a crazy double chin. I don't know why. Let's just get rid of that right now. <laughs> I sometimes 
don't contour my forehead. I'm gonna do it today because I'm spray tanned and I feel like it works. But when I'm not spray tanned, sometimes I feel like it just looks a little like too much. You can change the world with a nose contour. Some girls really go in with their nose contour, which I, is fine. I don't like to spend too much time on it. The highlight's what really is gonna make it look snatched though. So I'm going with a light colored powder. Just do the classic explanation point. I don't know if y'all can see this little brush, but it's, it's like a tiny little oval. And honestly, I've used a lot of brushes to highlight my nose. Um, and this one has just always been my tried and true. So for my blush, I like to use this. It, it's actually technically a contour brush, but as you can see with this one, this is like more like tight knit and better for contouring. This one's kind of like fluffier. When it comes to blushes, I'm a huge fan of like really girly baby pink blushes. We're gonna actually do my shimmery highlight. I've noticed that if I do it now, it gives it, it really just marinates into your cheek and honestly makes it that blinding into another dimension, like portal to another galaxy brightness. This is the famous Pheromone Shimmery Highlight. So I'm actually gonna go in with two different colors. Y'all don't be afraid to mix and match your highlights. Ooh. Oh my God, it just makes my spine tingle every time. So now we're going with a white highlight and we're just gonna pack that on top of that one. Now we're gonna go in with our under eye bake. So I'm gonna go back with the same powder that I did my nose contour with and we're just gonna set it loosely under my eyes. I like to just highlight right there. This is like a, obviously a matte powder highlight. It's not shimmery at all. I like to concentrate my shimmer where I want to be shimmery. I'm actually gonna clean up my contour by doing some of this under eye highlight actually right underneath my contour. This really just kind of like snatches you up real nice. Oh my God. So I guess it's time for eyes. I'm gonna start with this transition shade. It's like a little kind of taupey brown shade. I'm using like a little brush that's like Kind of flimsy and, you know, just really good for blending and you don't want something too stiff or intense because you just want that like little airbrushy kind of soft little blend. Some queens are really particular with their eye makeup and they like make sure it's really like cut. I kind of actually just plop it on. I know the eyes are the windows to the soul, but sometimes just ain't nobody got time for that. I accidentally broke my favorite white eyeshadow, so I have to buy a new one. So I'm actually using this color. It's not really a white white. I feel like the white on the lids is like very Christina Aguilera, which is like basically my favorite drag queen in the world. We're gonna go in um, again with our transition shade. I'm kind of messy with this part just because I like to just kind of get it on there and then blend it later. This is called the Cut Crease, guys. I'm just gonna go in there and just soften it up a little bit. Now that we have that base down, let's go in with a darker color to really define it. So I'm trying to kind of give you like this like little wing effect moment. Okay guys, so now that you have that down, we can actually go back in with that last little brush and then just kind of soften it all up so that it doesn't, if there's any harsh lines, you can just blend them out. I like to kind of highlight my brow bone um, with a lighter eyeshadow. I'm gonna go in with the same one that I did my eyelid. Um, this kind of just traces out where I'm gonna draw my eyebrows. I'm gonna take that first transition shade, our tried and true little contour sort of kind of color, and I'm just gonna drag it underneath the eye. Starting out with a light color and working your way into darker is just gonna really make sure that everything looks seamless, blended. Now we can go in with a little bit of a darker shade. I like to start at the outer corner and work my way in because it just looks better and more blended that way. If you start at the inner corner, you're gonna have like a dark blotch like right there. Okay guys, now it's time for the hard part. Our liquid liner. This never gets easier, honestly. I don't really know what to tell you. It's always gonna be hard. It just tough through it. It's it's okay, we'll, we're together, we can make it through this. Oh man. Okay guys, let's like say a little prayer to the makeup gods real quick. And mentally prepare. Come on, let this liner work. Oh my God. Because I'm 50 shades of extra, I'm gonna have like a really long wing. Y'all would love to watch a meltdown, huh? If I was at home watching someone do a makeup tutorial, I'd be like, yes, ruin that liner. Have a meltdown. 
If you're like me and it's not perfect, this is my favorite trick. I'm gonna go in with the black eyeshadow and I'm actually just gonna blend it out. Literally, you're just gonna go. Y'all see what that's doing there? And you know what? We're gonna go back with that brush that we keep going back to. I swear this little brush is everything. And then just blend that out a little bit on that line so it's not so harsh. I should have dusted this earlier. I'm gonna dust off my bake, which is that powder that we put under my eyes. I like to do it kind of at the end because it kind of helps catch any eyeshadow fallout that you might have. Like, it just keeps a barrier from that eyeshadow ruining your entire makeup. I'm gonna take a little flat-headed brush like this and I'm gonna dip it into this cream white. Get it in there. Don't be scared. Doing the little white really just opens your eyes. It makes you look awake, it makes you look refreshed, it makes you look well rested, it makes your eyes look big. I always save the brows for last just because I feel like they just really pop and look fresh if you wait. When you're doing a realistic brow, nobody's realistic brows are perfectly symmetrical. And if you can get out of that idea that they are, you'll have so much less stress and anxiety. At the end of your iris, is where your art should be, like that. I do what my natural hair color is, even though I'm, I'll wear blonde hair or pink hair. I just like, obviously, like I said earlier, a natural brow. I went right into the makeup store, literally put it up to my roots and figured it out. Also, it helps if you use a little angled brush like this, just pinch it so that it's nice and sharp so you get a real precise line. Now that we have the base down, I'm gonna go in and add some definition to it with a darker color. So you literally just... Cause I feel like a natural brow kind of is more dense and darker towards the end of it and then it gets kind of lighter as you get to the center. You're gonna need to lick your brush, sorry. This is the only way you can really get that, that little so tight and so flat and then you're just gonna Carefully just draw in your hair. We're gonna go in with mascara now. I feel like mascara is that one product in your makeup kit that you can really just use a cheap one if you want. You don't need like a designer mascara. They all do the same thing. I just grab whatever I can find. Do not ever pump your mascara like that. It actually blows air into it and makes your mascara dry out faster. Put it in and swirl it like that and then pull it out. I'm actually gonna go in and add some extra highlighter. Cause why not? We're gonna do the tip of my nose, the bridge of my nose. That basically just gives you that little girly Christina Applegate, Nicole Kidman moment. I kind of like to bring my highlight into my brow a little bit, just right there to the edge. So when you look to the right, it just adds that definition to your face. Okay guys, we're actually gonna go into lips now. We're actually gonna go in and do like a nude pink, which is very quintessential fair. Actually, I'm gonna start with the top. I like to create that little. Lately, I started actually pushing my lips out like this and then drawing over it, cause then when I like to blow kisses and sometimes if your lips aren't calibrated with the way that you're blowing, it looks weird, so do a little of that moment. I'm actually using this liner right now to overdraw my lips. I can't afford lip injections. I'm gonna do a liquid lip that dries matte. I like to um, do like a, maybe a shade or two darker than the lipstick shade, just so that it kind of creates that dimension and that depth. Alrighty guys, now it's time for lashes. These are actually just your average number 40 lashes. A lot of girls wear 301s and stuff. I I don't feel like they look right on me. They're too heavy, they're too big. I like to get a little lash glue and just dip my lashes into it. So let's just plop her on. And then after it's on, I actually like to take the tweezers and just squeeze it to my natural lash. And then the little finishing touch I'd like to do is I like to just actually put a little mascara on with it just to really blend. This is a little trick that I do, and every time I show someone this, they are obsessed and they do it all the time. I'm actually gonna go with my shimmery highlight and put it on my lips like that. 
Putting the shimmer on your lips before your gloss is just gonna add a little bit of dimension and make them look really, you know, like big and pouty and pumped with whatever. I love a glossy lip. Honestly, truly, come on guys, come on. That's great. There we go. So I guess now I'm gonna put my hair and my outfit on and I will see you guys in a second. All right guys, this is the finished look. Thank you guys so much for watching my drag transformation. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Farrah Rise. Thank you so much again and I hope you guys liked it. Hey, squirrel friend, when one video ends, just open up another one. It's called binge viewing. Go ahead, I support you.